Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. As you can see here, I'm going to get caught up on some seeding. I picked the perfect day to get caught up. It's like 85 degrees outside, but the dew point is like 68, 70 degrees, so it feels like it's way in the upper 90s. So, what better place to be in here with the air conditioning on and do some seeding? So, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what's going on here at the farm. Doug rented an excavator because we have the Vermilion River as our one boundary, you know, it's over behind us, behind the greenhouse there. And he cleaned out the river probably about 10 years ago or so, and we haven't had any major flooding. But now, since uh, we've had all the dead ash trees and a lot of log jams build up, we've had some flooding up in the uh, cow fields up front up there. So he decided to rent the excavator and to clear out all the log jams. So he was able to do that quite quickly, and now he is out there pulling up all kinds of multi-floral rows. I don't know if anybody else around the country has problems with it like we do, but uh, it's terrible. It gets into the pastures and you just can't kill it. It's such an invasive species. You know, it's funny, I remember my dad planting it as a hedgerow back in the 60s, so it's uh, not a good thing to do. But another good thing about Doug having the excavator is that he's able to get some huge rocks out of the creeks and bring them up around the houses, decorations and stuff, because nothing prettier for landscaping than I think than to have some big rocks around. So he's doing some fun things with the excavator, plus a lot of work things. And another thing that he found out a couple of years ago that we do with the excavators, uh, put in fence posts, especially down around the river where the uh, ground is nice and soft. I hold the post in place and then he puts a bucket on top of it and just push it right in, which goes a lot faster and a lot smoother than the uh, fence pounder that he has that goes on the skidster. So I like when he does that kind of stuff. And another thing that was interesting about Doug going around into the different woods and I was going up and seeing who was doing is that we found a bunch of trees that had gotten blown over from a big storm that we had go, go through here about three, four weeks ago, three o'clock in the morning. And of course we had major flooding with that, but also it took down trees like in a straight line across the property. So I'm not sure if it was a tornado or straight line winds. And one of the trees it took down was a huge popular, poplar tree. And Doug was able to get it moved so he can get it out of there to uh, put on his sawmill. So here I'm uh, seeding some five-star lettuce, you know how I like to multi-seed that with my little seeder here. So in today's video, I want to show you guys some of the things behind the scenes with the farm market and what we do to pack up and how I package some of my stuff. And I'll let you know how early I get up in the morning to go to the farm market. I think a lot of customers don't realize the work that goes into the prep before the farm market because, you know, we get there at about 7.30, the market opens at 9, and it takes us a while to get everything set up. You know, you got to unload the van, put up the tent, get the tables ready, put the tablecloths on, and get everything arranged, put your signs up. And it's just so funny to me that there's so many people that come at 8 o'clock, an hour before it opens, and expect us to be ready for everything to sell. So we try to accommodate everybody, but it's just I just wanted to give kind of a behind-the-scenes look at what happens at the farm market. And then the other thing we're going to show in today's video is a strawberry update, which is really interesting and really happy about what happened with the strawberries this year. I'm doing really well with them and eating a lot of them and selling a lot of them. So stay tuned and see what happens. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to say, as you guys are staying tuned to the video, watch at the end. Doug's going to put some of the videos of him pushing down trees and doing whatever he was doing with the excavator. So it's kind of interesting to see. So now I'm seeding some arugula. It is becoming so popular, from what I understand from a lot of my customers at the farm market, is they can't find it in the grocery stores as fresh as what I have. And a lot of times the grocery stores don't even have it. So every week I've been planting more and more, so it's been a big seller. I did try last week, just a real quick tip for you guys. I tried last week with a arugula um, variety that was supposed to be for hot weather. It did terrible for me. I had to reseed it. So I'm just sticking with the regular arugula from Johnny Seeds, and it, it's been doing really well and grows well and is ready to harvest in four weeks. So again, stay tuned and see what's going on. So I thought I'd show you guys one of my best-selling varieties at the farm market. It's a uh, spring mix. It's called Five Star. And I harvest it um, one head at a time. What I do is I put about 10 or 15 seeds into an aces cube and then all the, all the different lettuces come up in there. It's really a nice mixture. So one of my good sellers. So this is how I package the Five Star for the farm market. I do put it in my bags and I put one head or one and a half heads in a bag there and a head is what comes out of one cube see that one's got two of them in there and make it a nice weight for the customer because you want to sell what you like to buy and then I put everything in these bins that go into my cooler and they have a nice lid that clicks on top and keeps everything fresh I've been using these bins now for it's on my eighth season and they're still in really good shape so just clean and sanitize them each time after you get done and it's a really good way to save on packaging and to transport your greens and they stay nice and fresh now here's a butter lettuce that I package for the farm market. This is called Nancy. Now when I put this into my bins, I don't put it in bags. I just put the individual heads in the bins 
and when the customer wants to buy one, if they don't have their own bag or package to put it in, I just put it into a thank you bag and tell them to keep it closed and stick it in the crisper and it'll last up to two weeks in the refrigerator. Now here's a leaf lettuce I like to sell. It's called Tropicana. It has a really nice mild flavor. And again, I put this in the bins, individual heads, and just sell it that way. And the customers seem to know that even though I don't put things in fancy baskets, that I have a quality product, and the less it's handled, the less bruising, the better the quality is. That's what's good about these head lettuces. When you go buy the packaged stuff in the grocery store, everything's been washed and tumbled around. It gets bruised and doesn't taste too good and doesn't last as long. Okay, here's a look inside the cooler. Everything's packaged and ready to go tomorrow morning. It's all in my bins, all my lettuces and my greens, bok choy, cucumbers, got tomatoes out here on the table, and the basil's out here. So we're ready to go tomorrow. Get back here at 5.30 and load up the van. Okay, well, I'm all loaded up for the farm market. Doug and I got out there at 5.30 this morning and load up the van. You can tell it's pretty well jam-packed with everything. And it takes about 20 minutes to load up. So now I'm going to take off and go pick up Devin so we can do the market in Hudson. Well, I haven't been paying too much attention to my strawberries, but they're still giving me a pretty good haul. You can see the plants are producing really nicely. I got lots of runners on them and a few weeds here and there, but we'll take care of that when the weather cools down. But these guys are doing wonderful in the betel buckets. And the ones that have only three plants in them are producing way more than the ones that put five or six plants. It's amazing the difference of them. So we're real happy with how they're doing. I already harvested off of both of those back there. So there's a little bit of a strawberry update. Hey, I'll take you guys over here in a second here and go show you the ones in the bags and what we had to do for them. So here are the ones in the bags. They were doing terribly, so you have a few dead ones there. Couldn't figure out what was going on because we put holes in the bottom of the bags, you know, to let the water drain out. And I was messing around with them and seeing what was going on and I stuck a hole in one of the bags and water just squirted out. So I went ahead and put three holes on each side of the bags here just to um, get them better drainage. And that was just like a week ago. I did it on both sides. And now these guys are starting to take off and do really well. So I'm really excited to see what they produce. As you know, strawberries don't like wet feet. Here are the strawberries I just picked. Brought them into the head house, gonna put them in the cooler. Gonna put these up for us because it's the beginning of the week and it wouldn't be good for the farm market. But she's got some really nice size fruit here. Really, really happy with this. Look how big these guys are. So the new nutrient formula is working really well. Well, this is a tulip poplar that blew down in the last storm. I'm not sure how long it is, I haven't measured it, but it's a nice tree. And so I'm doing my best to pull this thing out of here. Um, I've got some limitations with the excavator because I'm kind of stuck in the woods. So I can't get a real good hold, handle on it, but I'm gonna try to get this thing out and then we'll get it uh, kind of cut up into some pieces and we'll put it on the mill, but this is gonna make some really nice poplar trim What a beautiful tree. Wow.
there is the Girl Scout camp. And that's all the blowdown. So this tree went from this stump down here by the creek all the way up to the Girl Scout camp. Really amazing. It's a really nice tree. It's got a little blemish at the bottom. I hope it's not too bad, but um, I should be able to get some really nice logs out of this and some really nice boards. Cool. I haven't cut a tulip poplar for a long time. So Doug is the excavator here, and we have this big tree that's leaning towards the telephone poles. So he's got it all ready, and he is going to push this guy over. So we'll watch what he does. He just puts the bucket up there and then just moves slowly forward. Mickey! Get Key in over here by me. And there it goes, down nice and easy. Nice. Now we don't have to worry about it falling onto the electrical lines. Because our power comes in from the back of the property because this is an old farm and we're part of an old co-op. That was pretty cool. See here. Now Doug's picking up the tree with the thumb and moving it out of the way. and doesn't like it. Come on, Kiwi. Well, I hope you guys liked today's video. And I hope you liked all Doug's excavator work and getting things cleaned up around the farm. Sounds like I got a really squeaky fan belt up there. It's been rainy and yucky and humid out, so that's why it's squeaking. So, I got all my seating done. I'm gonna head up to the house, figure out what to make for dinner. And like always, leave me questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video.